Hello everybody, welcome to this video about a beta version of Windows 95 uh, called Chicago. Um, just to give a bit of background on what I'm doing here, I've just decided to start a new series which is basically just going to be about uh, checking out uh, old beta versions of stuff. Things that are not widely uh, known about. So Windows 95, this is like a really early version of Windows 95. It came out in December 93 and uh, it was like a leaked version of uh, what was called codenamed Chicago at the time and basically this is a really early version of Windows 95 it's got uh, some uh, unusual differences and I thought it would be cool to just take a quick look at it and just uh, have a look at the differences between this and the final version of Windows 95 which uh, I obviously uh, like a lot because it was my first ever operating system and I've got a lot of nostalgic memories for Windows 95 so I thought it would be cool to kind of have a look at the development a bit and just see, you know, uh, what went into building it and what it looked like in the early days. Um, just before I turn this on, I'm probably going to make this like a regular new series, so I've got some other unusual uh, beta stuff that I want to have a look at, both games and desktop software, so uh, maybe we'll be having a look at other things in the near future, but for the moment, I'm just going to boot this up. Now, uh, being a beta version of Windows 95, there are a few problems. I'm running this in a virtual machine, but I'm not able to increase the resolution. Uh, it always throws a bit of a wobbler about the system.ini file when you first start it up, but you can easily get around that by just pressing a key. In this version, it comes up with a um, Windows networking dialog box, a little bit similar to how uh, Windows NT does things. Uh, this has got the name Andrew in it for some reason. I have no idea who Andrew is. Probably the guy who created this uh, ISO that I'm using. But uh, anywho. And now we're on the Windows uh, 95, or I should say Chicago Beta Desktop. Uh, now there's a few things to uh, bear in mind about this. Uh, now it's booted up. Uh, in fact, we'll get rid of these. It, like Windows 95 does, uh, it kind of remembers what you last had uh, open. Which is interesting. Because I've been playing around with this before I started recording. I'm just going to uh, start at the beginning. Uh, I might zoom this in as well, just so you can see what's going on. Because yeah, obviously, uh, like I say, because of the virtual machine and the fact that it's really beta software, I can't increase the resolution beyond 640 by 480 It just throws a total wobbler. So uh, we're just going to have to deal with it at 640 by 480 unfortunately. Now, uh, a couple of interesting things to just note straight off the bat. Firstly... Uh, if we have a look at the uh, icons, uh, my briefcase is simply called mybrief.bfc. Don't know why. Completely different icon as well from Windows 95. It's like this uh, metal attachy case. So that's a fantastic uh, difference. I've not opened that. We'll probably take a look at that later. Um, now the, on the, we'll come back to why this is here later. But this is uh, the programs, uh, like a bit like Program Manager in Windows 3.1. This is where all your programs are kept, basically. Uh, recycle dot bin as opposed to recycle bin, but uh, we all know what a recycle bin does. It's where we bin stuff uh, that we don't want. And you've got your my computer, which is as you'd expect my computer with a slightly uh, different icon from the final version of Windows 95. And also we've got uh, some basic level networking in this as well. Uh, it's able to uh, do some basic uh, local area networking. It's not got a TCP/IP stack. Uh, it doesn't come with Windows 90, uh, sorry, not Windows, it come, doesn't come with Internet Explorer and uh, it doesn't have IPv4, so there's no way of getting on the internet with this. But you can do some basic low level networking between computers, sharing files and things of that nature, and does a bit of uh, network printing as well, if you're lucky. Um, okay, so let's, um, before we go into this, we'll just have a quick look at the main desktop itself uh, before we get onto the blaringly obvious uh, differences down here, but we'll come on to that later. Uh, the first thing is the right click context menu, uh, doesn't look too unusual, but if we go into properties here, uh, we can see like a really early version of uh, the properties menu from the final Windows 95, and uh, here you can, we've got uh, various different uh, wallpaper uh, pictures that you can use, uh, such as the Windows logo, which I believe was in Windows 3.11, I'm pretty sure all this stuff is from Windows 3.1. Just the usual tiles and things. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a new one actually. I've never seen that before in any version of Windows, but correct me if I'm wrong, that could be in Windows 3.11 as well. There's a weird colour disparity there, but 
Never mind. I'm sure these should probably be better tiled. Yeah, there you go. Oh, beautiful. So fantastic. I might use it as my actual wallpaper. Uh, I kid. So yeah, the oh honey, yes honeycomb. So it's, it's just usual background thing. This looks very similar to. Uh, oh, this is uh, like a, a bit of um, wallpaper they must have stuck in there, Chicago. This is very similar to uh, the Windows 95 dialog box for changing your background, although uh, this is quite clearly built on Windows 3.1. Uh, there's a couple of things to bear in mind. I mean, uh, firstly, these radio buttons are diamond shaped, which is obviously very unusual, and that actually lasted quite a long way into the betas, right up until some of the final betas. And uh, radio buttons are originally going to be diamond instead of round, so that's uh, an interesting one. And, and you also notice in this window another glaringly obvious thing is that um, the windows are like Windows 3.1. So instead of having an X button up here, you've got the uh, minus button on the left hand side, and that brings up your context menu to move or close something. Um, and that's just like how it was in Windows 3.1. So the X button has not been invented yet, or if it has been invented, it's not been implemented yet. So that's another interesting thing. So some of these wallpapers are pretty interesting. But, uh, yeah, we'll just have a quick scroll through these. Uh, the Carlton Bank special there. But I think what I'll do is I will put on the... Oh, that's an interesting one. I like that. We'll leave it Chicago. Work in progress. Indeed you do. Um, we've got some screen savers, uh, again, which is, uh, again, a lot of these are going to be uh, carried over from... Uh, Windows 3.11 and that's pretty fancy for an early ver version of uh, Windows 95 uh, that old version did that come in the final? I think that came in the final one and uh, the good old uh, flying windows which everyone's familiar with and uh, there's two versions of that for some reason oh and there's two marquees what does this say? Windows 3.1 so as you can see it's quite blatantly built off Windows 3.1 because uh, it's even saying it in the marquee there and the old flying through space, uh, just the usual fare there, nothing interesting going on. Uh, some very basic monitor settings as well. Uh, again, I can't change the resolution, it just doesn't boot up if I change it out of 640 by 480 so unfortunately that's why we're dealing with this. Uh, we've only got a 16-bit colour palette. Again, I don't really want to change that just in case it all uh, goes on a massive wobbler. So that's the uh, right-click dialog box. Um, okay, let's uh, get into some of the more um, blatantly obvious things that are different. First of all, you will notice that there's no start button, or at least not as we know it today. Uh, there are three buttons down here which uh, perform some of the similar functions to the start button, but they've been split out into three different buttons. Uh, the Windows flag is the first one here. Uh, there's also a second one which is for uh, basically documents and finding things. So you've got your recent documents here. Uh, what you've looked at recently, uh, some of your personal files, so things that are in your documents, uh, I think they go there. And uh, you've got your find option where you've got your find files and uh, network resources as well. So like we were saying before, about it's got some basic networking stuff in there as well. Um, so you click on find files, this opens up what looks very similar to the uh, good old um, Windows 3.1 find. Uh, just stick your file name in and search, nothing exciting there. As you can see on this window, uh, the minus and uh, expand buttons have been put in uh, to some degree. Well, that's another interesting thing we'll come to in a minute. But uh, obviously the X button's not been implemented, that's still under the old Windows 3.1 uh, minus icon on this side. And as you can see there's uh, some uh, blatant, blatant jarring obvious uh, design f things here where there's elements of 3.1 mixed in with 95 and it's um, as you, it's like very half baked as a beta would be as you'd expect and it's obviously all very early days uh, while we've got this open we might as well go over what just what you just saw there which is um, unlike the final version of Windows 95 when you minimize a program it doesn't go uh, in here although that fine file bit there does but um, what it originally does is float here on the desktop is kind of like a like a kind of icon which you can move around and then when you want to bring it back you just click on that and you can just restore it so that's uh, unusual uh, which is a pretty cool idea really I don't know why they I think this is, this makes more sense but it doesn't where you can reopen it using that but you can't uh, minimize it again so it behaves differently but yeah this um, on screen thing is a odd little thing which uh, unnecessary really so I don't think it needed to be there but it's an interesting idea and I think that sort of 
falls again back into the way uh, Task Manager used to work in Windows 3.1. So that's probably where that's a hangover from. And uh, so that's where you've got your finder stuff. You've got this option as well, which is basically the equivalent to your help menu. So you've got your help file here, which is um, all your usual uh, standard Windows help files. And under here, you've got a lot of other options which have uh, not been uh, completed yet. Quick tips would be there with some wizards, Windows tutorial, how much of this stuff actually uh, ever got made is debatable. And obviously, you've got your about as well, which will give you the about Chicago, uh, 1985 to now. So this must have been, uh, yeah, well, I think this was late 93, but it does say 94 there. So maybe this was an early 94 version. And uh, this is licensed to somebody called Morris Tinclair, apparently. So whoever you are, Morris, thank you. Get rid of that. And, of course, this is where you've got some of your other start menu functions. Uh, the Windows flag has you run. Uh, you've got a task list, which is uh, basically your old Control-Alt-Delete, but a very basic version of it, uh, where you can see any running uh, tasks. We've got uh, tray properties, which is basically uh, like the start menu properties. You can uh, auto-hide the, uh, the taskbar, make sure it's always on top. Uh, so on, so on. Uh, very basic version of that. Uh, you can arrange your desktop icons here, but why you'd want to do that? And also, you've got also your arrange up. You know, like when you used to right click on the taskbar, you could uh, cascade your windows, tile, or is vertically. You've got all that gubbins here. And uh, you've also got your shutdown option, which is good if you want to turn off your computer. Windows 8 take note. Okay, so uh, what you obviously notice there is that you cannot run any programs. There's no programs folder. It's not like the start menu yet. You can't run programs from any of these buttons unless you know the directory and you go and run and type it in manually. So that's why we have this programs folder. Now here we've got, uh, it's a little bit like Task Manager, although it's uh, kind of using the Explorer shell type thing. But uh, yeah, it's very similar to uh, Task Manager in, in Windows 3.1. Uh, we've got three main folders. Uh, this is your startup folder. This is uh, where any programs you want to run on launch go. And uh, you've got your main programs and your games. Uh, we'll go on main programs first. We can save the uh, exciting stuff till later. Uh, we've got uh, various different icons here. Uh, some basic programs where it's obviously not been uh, fully uh, furnished yet. We've only got a few programs. Uh, Windows setup here just gives you some very basic. Uh, system settings, uh, README file, which uh, tells you more about Windows 3.1 again. So uh, obviously this is very blatantly built off Windows 3.1. Uh, print manager again from Windows 3.1. It's not working on here. No printer, no virtual machine. It's not going to work. But uh, again, this is very Windows 3.1 dialog box. Uh, your PIF editor, which uh, I never knew what the PIF editor did, quite frankly. So uh, I'm sure it did something very important. Uh, you got your old MS DOS. Uh, well, we've just been booted straight into DOS there, so that's fantastic. Uh, let's just uh, let's uh, exit. Yeah. Ah, well, that was a rocky error. I was expecting that to come up in a window, but it didn't. And uh, quite frankly, that was frightening. Um, right, moving on. File Manager, which is basically uh, the old file manager from Windows 3.1. So, uh, unlike Windows Explorer, which is a much easier way to look for files, and there is a basic version of Windows Explorer in this. This is how it used to be in Windows 3.1. So, you had your uh, trees, click on the folder, it took you to the files over here, you switch your disks there, and stuff like that. There is no disk in Drive A, that's because there is no Drive A. Uh, we've also got uh, an interesting thing with the control panel. There's two icons for control panel. There's one which is a Windows Explorer folder and there's one which seems to be some sort of application dedicated to it and it looks slightly different. This one behaves a lot slower and is... Uh, the, I think this is like an early version of the control panel feature which is obviously a work in progress and this is uh, the Windows 3.1 control panel where you've just got your icons in a normal window like this. Uh, we'll come on to what's in the control panel a little bit. Uh, we've got the clipboard viewer which uh, you can use standard Windows 3.1 clipboard viewer. No one needs a clipboard viewer in this day and age, but you know, I guess. Uh, and then you've got another clipboard viewer uh, because we always uh, need more clipboard viewers and you can't have enough of those. And finally, we've got a cabinet here, which uh, doesn't seem to do anything that I can logically work out. 
uh, this is your printer's file there, that's where your printer's go. We're not going to go into too much detail on that. So in your control panel, we've got some ba very basic, again, all, all mostly Windows 3.1 stuff. Uh, things like changing the colours of stuff here. So we can uh, change the desktop background window colours. Uh, again, this is all stuff you'll have seen in Windows 3.1. So there's nothing too exciting going on in here. Mouse settings, uh, which has caused the kernel 32 DLL error. Fantastic. Let's just do a quick control alt Dell here. It looks like you want to reboot, so here's an interesting thing. When you press control alt delete you don't get into the task manager like you do in Windows 95. Uh, it kind of says, oh look, you want to reboot, because this is what you used to do in Windows 3.1. If you press control alt delete it used to restart the system. So when you press control alt delete on this, it gives you this um, rather mad dialog box with a lot of exclamation marks on it. Uh, so cancel will uh, return to Windows. Uh, pressing OK will just do a clean reboot. And if you press Control Alt Delete again, it will just go for boom. So uh, we'll do it clean because why not? Uh, so if you press OK there and just wait for this and uh, you might briefly see the Chicago uh, boot screen there it comes on very quickly because of the virtual machine it boots so fast that you can't really see it but uh, yeah it's uh, obviously just kind of like a weird Chicago uh, beta thing uh, okay let's back where we were let's go back into programs and not touch any of that anymore uh, oh, oh yeah, it remembers what I was doing. Um, okay, let's get rid of that. There's nothing exciting going on in there. It's just the usual uh, Windows 3.1 control panel stuff. And uh, four games uh, included as well. Uh, I think these were also included in Windows 95, Windows 3.1. Nothing exciting there. you got usual Solitaire. Uh, you got your Minesweeper game, which is uh, something I could never really properly work out. And uh, Hearts and Freestyle, which nobody ever played. So just the usual thing. No reversey. So uh, which this is a, a downgrade in many ways from Windows uh, Windows 1. So that's the Windows 95 beta, basically. I don't think there's much else to really discuss. And uh, it's really early stuff. It's uh, kind of still 16-bit at this point. So you can't run any or any 32-bit programs nothing really works with it and a lot of 16-bit programs don't work as well uh, there's oh, some other hidden stuff in here so as well have a look at these I think this is old uh, Windows 3.1 stuff uh, cal yeah this is your Windows 3.1 calculator uh, I think there's a lot going to be a lot of stuff uh, so I ported over to this from Windows 3.1 or in fact this is basically Windows 3.1 just see that's the uh, clock application you that's like really sort of traditional from the original Windows uh, Dr. Watson, I never really understood what Dr. Watson did to be honest with you, I'm sure it was a very important diagnostic tool for developers. Uh, I think this is the uh, old um, group um, task manager, but that doesn't really work. Log on off, .exe, exciting. Uh, I think there's, oh yeah, there's earlier media plays in it, so that's uh, pretty decent. Uh, you used to play your midis and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, there weren't any note. Uh, there's notepads in here as well, which is um, quite useful because that's got a grey background for some reason. Oh, there's two versions of Notepad. Now this is interesting. Oh, this is Note 32. So this is the 32-bit version, which is obviously in progress. That's interesting. Um, yeah, because I should say it's got some basic 32-bit stuff implemented in this version, but a lot of the programs are still 16-bit. So this is your original 16-bit Notepad. Hello, world as it were and uh, this is the 32-bit version which is obviously a uh, early progress version oh, no I don't want to save the changes actually do I close no very confusing uh, yes yeah, so obviously there's some work going on there with relation to 32-bit uh, versions of programs ah paintbrush yes good old uh, Windows 3.1 paintbrush Pretty good, pretty dire, dire docs right there for for people who need to do uh, painting. Photoshop, it is not. Ah, oh, this this one's program manager. Yeah, so this is uh, your traditional program manager from uh, Windows 3.1. Uh, I don't think there's anything else interesting going on in here. The recorder, uh, which is uh, basically used to record macros and stuff like that. This was. Um, something that was incredibly dangerous and should never have shipped with it. Uh, oh, there's an early version of WordPad there. 
Oh, that's pretty decent. It's called uh, right pad in this apparently, and uh, I think this will be a bit better than Notepad. Uh, yeah, I've got some basic word processing uh, gubbins going on here. Put a bit of uh, magenta, lovely. So yeah, this is kind of like where Windows 95 uh, started off really, and this is an early version of it. It's very blatantly built on Windows 3.1, but uh, it's interesting to see how Windows 95 was starting to take shape. And uh, the start button was uh, kind of uh, beginning to come together as a concept. Uh, the desktop obviously has been implemented in this. Uh, icons on the desktop and uh, it's sort of starting to look a little bit like Windows 95 so quite interesting. Uh, okay, thanks very much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, uh, I do apologise and I don't know why you watched all the way to the end, you stupid person. I will be doing more videos of this nature and I'll be doing some more real life stuff, uh, unboxing videos and things like that, so I'm hoping to do some more of that too. So, a little bit of everything for everybody. And uh, thank you for watching, take care. Bye.